Hey guys, Crazy Al here, back, playing FDB, episode number 25, gonna make myself one of these things, well I've already made it, implosion compressor, I've already tested it out, and I'm just gonna rebuild it with you guys just in case uh, some of you don't know how to set this up, it's a little bit different than setting up the industrial blast furnace, but somewhat similar, it's not as high, it's not uh, four blocks high, it's only three blocks high, and you're going to need eight standard machine casings. These are the simple ones. And then you're also going to need 18 reinforced machine casings. Check the recipe for the reinforced machine casing. It might be different with uh, whatever mod pack you're using, but uh, that's the recipe for that. And the recipe for the uh, standard is pretty simple. There you have it. And yeah, let's set this thing up right now. It's a three by three. Uh, system here you're gonna have to start with the well you don't have to start but you're gonna it's probably better to start off with the the regular standard you're gonna have to put one in each corner here like so and then you're gonna fill in the rest leaving the middle empty with the reinforced machine casings like this there you have it, that's the basic setup of it. And then you're gonna need to put your implosion compressor, and here's the recipe for that. It's pretty easy, advanced alloy, uh, advanced machine blocks, and then a basic compressor, and then uh, you know whatever combination here you wanna use. And the thing is, obviously, if you check out the industrial blast furnace, this is how I first set it up. I just put the block down like this. So I ended up putting the block right here. And of course powering it and it didn't work you have to put the block at the top in the middle here i think anyways it works for me that's the way it works for me and you also got to make sure that you power this with uh, 32 eu per tick that's the max that this thing can handle so this this wire here is running off an nmfe i believe so it's running at a higher voltage medium voltage so you're gonna make sure if you if you got a similar setup that you downgrade your power to the low voltage and that is a low voltage transformer so i'm going to grab my glass fiber cable power this thing up so yeah that's pretty much it now it is ready to go this is what you use to make iridium plates and i already set this up or tested this earlier and i don't have any more iridium so i don't i don't have enough anyways to make one of these which is what you need to do you need to make one of these in the rolling machines with advanced alloy and then iridium ingots which is basically just uh you know one of these in the compressor and then the diamond dust in the middle then you drop that in here with some industrial tnt the recipe for that is a flint tnt like so and you just drop that industrial TNT in here. I think you need eight of them to make one iridium plate. And then you put your uh, iridium alloy ingot right here. And then it just kind of, you know, makes a plate for you. Let's check it out, actually. See what it looks like. So, yeah, you just have a system like this. And then you get a little bit of a dark ashes. Not sure what you can use that for. Uh, let's check it out, actually. You can use it to make fertilizer i guess to double fertilizer yeah there's not much you can actually do with it it's kind of a useless useless waste item but yeah there it is that's the implosion the implosion the implosion compressor so yeah i thought i'd start off the episode with a little tutorial on how to set that up and i'll show you guys a little bit of what i've been working on right now uh, I've changed the outside here a little bit and I'm getting ready for my alvearies or at least one of them that's where I'm gonna put my alviary so I got a little bit oh hello buddy yeah I got a little bit of a different setup I switched up the B basement here I got this kind of skylight thingy that I can fly through which is kind of cool let me just turn off hover mode so I can get up there quickly. Oh, oh, that is not good. <laughs> and as you can see, I got mobs down here. I got mobs. And I 
thought I had enough light down here, and I don't know how they're getting in here. They're obviously not getting through here. At least I don't think they are. And I'm going to have to patch that up. But uh, let's take a look here at what I got. I got the honey tank, uh, the DNA tank. I switched things up a bit here. I've got the uh, centrifuge here for my uh, bee stuff. And then, of course, I got my squeezer to make my honey. And that's, of course, all piped into my tank underground here, coming out here. So, yeah, I just drop in my uh, honey drops and honeydews or whatever the heck you call them. And just drop them in there. And then, of course, I got my scent gene pool here, which I probably should turn off the power because it does drain the power. I'm not using it right now. And I just stacked uh, some uh, uh, hoppers here. <laughs> Because I've been too lazy to do the 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 gate setup where I have a you know I have a a chest up here somewhere where I can put all my waste bees and they get uh, funneled into here automatically to my gene pool and turned into uh, wonderful bee DNA. But one of the things I want to set up here in this episode is another tank. So I got my honey tank, I got my DNA tank, and I want to get a seed oil tank. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna use. I want to use the watermelon, but I don't have any watermelon seeds yet. So I got to go find some watermelon watermelon seeds, and maybe I'll make a, a watermelon uh, multi farm, perhaps around here, and then have a system where uh, I have a squeezer, you know, squeezing the, you know, the oil into the tank, and then of course I'll probably run that off the power plant here. Although that is a uh, that will be quite far away, but uh, I'll figure out a way to just. Uh, Get some redstone energy conduit over there. Use that to power. And then, of course, I want to make my alviary. Just give you guys a bird's eye view of this. I think it kind of looks cool. It gave me a cool idea of having this. Uh, I know I'm going off topic here. Of having this kind of sky skylight thing here. So I'm thinking of making... Uh, this will be my bee labs. I think this is where I'll do all my bee testing. And then maybe I'll actually make a bee farm. Where I can do like mass production of bee stuff you know, when I get to that level. And I'll probably do that maybe in a different location, although I could do it right here. But I've been thinking of maybe using a different location just to have something fresh and different, but also just, you know, when you have everything running at your base, uh, if you guys have a big, big base, kind of like this, and you have a lot of stuff running, you'll probably notice that your frames are, uh, you know, they're not they're not their best. I mean, I'm still getting pretty good frames. I'm recording at 30, so I'm, I'm happy. But I don't know, I thought maybe having a, a bee farm somewhere maybe a thomcraft base or magic base or something like that in another location as well i don't know i kind of like the idea of having everything in one spot but i also kind of like the idea of having uh separate bases <laughs> i don't know uh, i'm kind of going off topic here but anyways yeah i want to make my alviary that's one thing i definitely want to work on i've already kind of made those scented planks or began making those scented planks kind of up here i'll show you guys real quick in the carpenter so I just kind of use these uh, capsules that are made with wax I don't know if I can pull the recipe here these things are kind of cool uh, they're basically just three wax here I'll just show you guys they're basically just three wax um, like this and it makes these 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 wax capsules that you can fill with a variety of different fuels or liquids and if you're into bees you're getting tons of wax so it's a great way to blow through it you can I think you can use them in your machines as well, like uh, you know your your uh, semi fluid generator, and I, I think you can. I'm not 100% of the wax ones work, but uh, I'm pretty sure they do. But anyways, here is the scented panels. So that's the recipe: the royal jelly, the wood planks, the bees wax, and of course the pollen. And I got 35 of those, and it looks like I'm running out of pollen. And that's not surprising because that is the, uh, you know, that was the hardest thing for me was to get the, that, that bee that produces that, which is, uh, what was it called again? It was called the, that was the industrious, the industrious bee, but I do have some of those. But um, anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I'm going to put my uh, seed oil tank, probably fix the creeper damage down here, and I'll be right back.
Alrighty, stupid slime. Okay, so I got the tank set up. Um, not finished yet. I gotta put in the glass inside. I kind of went uh, a little weird with the uh, the glass part of the tank. The uh, iron, what is it called? Iron tank gauge. So hopefully it works like this. It's a little bit uh, different than my normal tanks. But I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's the same size as the two tanks in here. And I thought putting it on the outside here make it a little different than putting it underground. Kind of make things a little uneven. I'll probably roll with just the regular tank wall here at the bottom. Don't need to put glass there. Okay, so let's see if this thing is going to work. Oh, and it does. Sweet. Okay, awesome. So yeah, this is where I'm going to put all my uh, seed oil. For now, anyways. And it looks a little weird, but... <laughs> yeah. I think it... I think I'll be okay. Take a look from outside here. So yeah, all I need to do now is I need to make a squeezer. Unless I got one in my chest somewhere, I might have an extra one that I made for the biomass facility. I'm not sure if I use that one or not, but yeah, I need to make a squeezer and a farm. I went out and I tried to find some watermelon seeds. It's unbelievable that I haven't wa I haven't even found watermelon seeds yet. I mean, that's ridiculous. With all the mining that I've done, I have not found any watermelon seeds. I know, it's crazy. So I'm needing to go do that. That's what I'm going to do probably right now. And I did do some exploring, and I found myself my first portal gun. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I know you can craft it, but I wanted to find it. <laughs> so now I've got a portal gun, which is cool. And let me just double check to make sure if I got a squeezer in here. Oh, a fermenter, moistener. Yeah, no squeezer. Yeah, I'm going to have to find that. And let's just check. Maybe I do have some seeds in here. Um, No, I don't have. That's crazy. That I don't have watermelon seeds yet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to go <laughs> try and find. I'm going to go and try to find some watermelon seeds. I'm going to spend an hour here. If I can't find it, then I'm going to come back and uh, probably bust out a multi-farm here. So I at least have the multi-farm set up. And yeah, so I'll see you guys in a second. I have given up on trying to find melon seeds. Just too tough to find right now. So I'm just going to roll the pumpkins. Pretty much the same thing. I got eight pumpkins. It's probably not enough, but that's what I'm going to go with. And I'm going to build this multi farm right now. I'm thinking I'm going to make it somewhere around here. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'll make it somewhere around here. So I'm just going to build it up a little bit here. Build the platform. And then I'll be right back and set it up with you guys. And show you guys how you do set up the pumpkin or the melon farm. It's the same thing. You use the same sort of uh, setup. But uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, so let's build up one of these uh, circuits here. Intricate circuit, I think they're called. And that's the circuit I'm going to need to modify the multi-farm to be a pumpkin farm. Yeah, intricate circuit board. Okay, so I got one of those. Um, I wonder if I should make another one just in case I screw up. Okay, I'm just going to turn this off here. Head out to the multi farm in the back, which I haven't built yet. I got all the blocks to do that here. It's going to be the biggest multi farm, which is going to be a five by five by four high, I believe. So here's where I'm going to put it. And I think I got it mapped out correctly. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's drop this in here. I got a multiple. I got some chiseled stone and some stone bricks, so it's a little bit mixed up. And that's the cool thing with the multi farms is you can mix them up; it doesn't really matter. 
and I'll just start with the basic blocks here and then I'll go in and I'll put the uh, you know the valve and uh, hatch and all that stuff so just kind of set this up here set up the bottom here and I'm gonna stack off of this layer here so I'm gonna have to go four highs so that's two three so that should be four all right so <laughs> give me a second I'm gonna fast forward this park it's gonna take me forever to do it so uh, see you guys in a second Okie dokie. So the basic multi-form structure is done and now has an interface. If we right click on it, as you can see, by default, it's a managed arboretum. So it's a tree farm. Don't want that. I want a pumpkin farm. So to make a pumpkin farm, I'm going to have to modify this intricate circuit board. So for that, I'm going to use a soldering iron that I have right here. And I'm going to use these things, obsidian electron tubes. This is what you use to make this chipset into um, <clears throat> like a pumpkin or a melon farm. I believe anyways, I've never done this. So, well, I've done this before, but I've never done, I've never made a melon farm before. So we'll just uh, bring up the interface for the soldering iron here. And I'll drop in four of these because with the multi farm, you'll notice there's four sides. So one, two, three, four. So if we bring up the soldering iron here, we're on yeah, managed farms and I don't want a managed farm. I want a manual farm for this just because the dirt doesn't need to be changed out constantly. Like with a, a tree farm, for example, you need to constantly change out the dirt because it gets turned into sand. I believe anyways, that for the melon and the pumpkin farm, I will only need a manual farm. It doesn't mean that it won't harvest. It will harvest everything, but it just won't replant the dirt unless it's needed. It's basically the same setup that I have for the wee farms. So, okay. So let's do the soldering iron. Uh, select manual farms. Take my obsidian. Use four of those. And that is called a gourd. A gourd farm. Which is a little weird. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is the one that make that, that allow me to use pumpkins and melons. Okay, so now I got to find that chipset. Intricate chipset. I drop that in there. And there you have it. This is a manual farm. So all I need to do is bring up the interface again, drop this chipset in, and bam. Oh yeah, there you go. It's a melon farm. But again, like I said, it also should work for pumpkins. So right now what I need to do is I need to set up the underneath the powering of it. And I've already brought in some redstone energy conduit that's hooked up to my, you know, my power plant that I got kicking around over there right there. So I got the uh, redstone energy cell. And I got this thing hooked up to it, so I used up all that uh, whole bunch of uh, redstone energy conduit. I'm going to have to make some more. I'm actually down to my last... Oh, actually, I got 51, so I'm not too bad. So for now, what I need to do here is I need to figure out what I want this to look like. But uh, I'm going to drop in a farm hatch on the bottom. So that's going to suck up the items, or suck out the items of the out of the farm and then i'm going to need a farm gearbox which is where i'm going to plug in the power and then the valve the valve i know for sure that i'm going to put on top and i know for sure i'm going to put the other on the bottom i just don't know where but for the valve i want it to be pumped right in the middle so i'm going to pop out that block i'm going to grab my valve block and i'm going to set up a water system at the top here kind of like that one over there i don't know if you can see it on camera but uh, that's my wheat farm and i got some water right above it with an aqueous accumulator that will send water into here so i will do that off camera now i just need to figure out how i'm going to do this so give me a second here guys and i'll be right back Alrighty guys, it is working. I went ahead and just set the whole thing up just because I had to test things out a little bit and it wasn't actually working when I first started doing it because uh, of course a manual farm you have to manually put in the dirt and I was too stupid even though I've done this already multiple times. I thought the farm planted the dirt but it doesn't. 
So yeah, what you're going to need to do to set up one of these pumpkin farms, a manual pumpkin farm, is you're going to have to plant in all the dirt on your own, and then you're going to have to pick the spots that you want water. And I tried to pick a, you know, a minimal amount of spots for the water. Same thing with the wheat farm, just so I can maximize the amount of spots that I can put, uh, you know, these pumpkin seeds. So you'll have to plow the, you'll have to plow the dirt as well on your own. But then once you have the seeds, you know, planted and everything plowed and, and you got everything set up, then uh, you just turn the farm on by powering it and of course putting some fertilizer in it and it will go ahead and harvest all the pumpkins for you and I did a little kind of rain catcher thingy on the top the same thing that I have on the wheat farm so basically all I have here is just uh, some glass with some stairs and an infinite water supply with an aqueous accumulator in the middle with some stone waterproof pipes from Buildcraft hooked up to that going into the farm via the valve and let's take a look underneath where we have most of the stuff set up here well pretty much everything set up it's just i'm not sure if i'm going to keep it like this i put some chiseled stone just to clean it up a little bit and i didn't want the pipes going into the dirt because that just bothers me but uh yeah right here we got the hatch and a stone transport pipe hooked up to that so you don't need to put a wood pipe or anything just to hook up a straight up build a craft pipe into the uh, hatch and it will suck the items out and right here this is an auto crafting table so in here I just put in a pumpkin and of course that makes pumpkin seeds so every time a pumpkin is you know goes in here we'll just take a look here it comes so there you have it it makes some seeds and then I got a, a tar chick gate here instead of a redstone engine so the Atar Atarchik gate is pulling the items out of the auto crafting table with uh, items in inventory with Pulsar. So that's how you set up items in inventory. And any day now will show up. There it is. And the Pulsar. Energy Pulsar. So that is sucking out the seeds and going into the squeezer. And of course I got a lot of them in there because I had this thing running uh, for a while that's why there's a lot of seeds so hopefully this squeezer you know will be able to keep up with the uh, amount of seeds coming in I'm pretty sure it should be fine I don't think that many pumpkins are coming in but I'll keep my eye on it I don't think uh, it'll start overflowing hope not anyways so then I got the liquid ducts thermal expansion liquid ducts hooked up with the output pointing out and of course I gotta apply a redstone uh, signal there with just a regular level le level a level <laughs> a lever and then you got the the seed oil coming out here underground all the way through here and then into my seed oil tank and I got four buckets already almost five buckets <laughs> it's gonna take a while to fill that tank up oh my goodness but uh, I'm in no hurry I don't think I'm gonna be using too much seed oil right now but uh down the road I will most likely use more of it hopefully but uh, I just wanted to add that to my B labs so I got the seed oil I got the DNA now and I got the honey tanks so I got those three tanks set up for my bee stuff and right now hmm, um, that dripping water is annoying me so I'm gonna have to do something about that I'm probably gonna put in some lamps here just to stop the uh, leak from happening i think if you put a lamp over that like just a fixture lamp i don't know or maybe i can just put a one of those uh, planks or whatever not planks but covers anyways i'm gonna be right back i'm just gonna go in empty my inventory and then uh, fix this dripping water try to drop in some covers here I tried to put a lamp for some reason I thought the lamps uh, I thought the water didn't go through the lamps I'm not sure why I thought that but uh, I thought that <laughs> so I'm gonna take that lamp out I'm just gonna drop that in there for now 
And gonna make myself some covers. I think I need eight of them. I'm probably gonna have too many actually now. Yes, I'm gonna have too many. That's all right, got 16. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop these in. I'll just make sure which one's dripping. Is it this one? Okay, so that should stop dripping. And this one here. And which one is it? Is it this one? So hard to tell. Is it this one? <laughs> uh, I guess we're gonna find out. So let me get in here. It's kind of hard to tell with this angle. Which one's dripping? I think it's this one right here. I may have screwed up here. Nope, looks good. And right here, and right there, right here, I believe. And I believe right here, there you go. Okay, so now, no more dripping, no more dripping. Okay, kind of looks weird, but uh, a little OCD with those, those drops. <laughs> okay, so let me just show you guys something that I've been working on here very very slowly i'm finally finally there haven't built it but it's, it's ready to go there she is the matter fabricator <laughs> finally got everything i needed that's why i needed that uh that thing down here the implosion 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 thing the implosion <laughs> the implosion compressor that's why I needed that. I needed an iridium. I just had enough iridium to make this thing in the middle here. This Lapatronic energy orb. Then I made all these things here. These uh, energy flow circuits. Teleporters. Those were easy to make. High, highly advanced machine blocks. Those things are not too hard to make. I just had to get chrome and titanium. And uh, these things. These things were a little bit pain in the butt to make I think because I needed to get some shiny ingots but I got that through Pharos the Pharos uh, you know you find it out there kind of looks like iron in this texture pack and you just drop that in your pulverizer and then once in a while I get a shiny ink a shiny a shiny dust one of these things shiny metal dust so uh, yeah I think I'm gonna call it an episode right here guys <laughs> Kind of a mixture of things today but uh i will definitely start working on setting up some sort of area that i'm going to use for uu matter so some kind of uu matter factory and then i'm going to be able to finally finally use all the power that i've been setting up and i'm going to have to set up some more power plants because i know that my the the matter fabricator takes so much juice that uh even with the fuel the lava the biofuel and whatever else I got cooking around here is not going to be enough to power this thing. But uh, it will be cool to see, you know, if I can keep up with it at some point without using solar power, which is my goal. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm going to call it right here. And as always, I'd like to thank you for watching. And hopefully, I'll see some of you in the next episode. Later.